still here. Detroit is different at the Just League Conference. On behalf of New Detroit, we're talking diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this is someone with New Detroit, uh, someone a visionary in this conference. Uh, Rebecca, how are you today? I'm well. Thank you so much for being here. Definitely, definitely. So seeing this come to life, and I was actually given this question, it, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, what excited you about this conference? Why is it important for something like this to take place in Detroit, Southeast Michigan? Well, for a number of reasons, but what excited me the most was the idea of bringing a number of different experts together for, the, for everyone to share what they are doing and the work that they're doing. So there's been a lot of talking going on over the last two and a half years since the murder of George Floyd and with the I, Black Lives Matter was here before that, but kind of the, the uprising and what folks are calling a racial reckoning. And as a lot of folks were coming together to talk, I'm hearing in the community people want action. And they're like, we're tired of talking, we want to do things. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm all here for that. Let's get to it. But it's really important for us to share resources for us to continue the conversations because we've only started to scratch the surface. And I'm reminded of, and I would love to remind folks, you know, we study a long time to do the work that we do in whatever field you're in. So the idea or the thought that dismantling racism is something you can do in one session, you could do in a few conversations, I think it's a little crazy to think that way. You know, it's something that has taken hundreds of years to build. I hope it doesn't take us hundreds of years to dismantle, but it's certainly going to take a little bit longer than a few conversations. And, and in that, what what brings you to this work? What was the essence of this that, that just brought you into this space to even, you know, have interest in it, um, to speak upon it and enlighten people about it? Yeah, so I'm actually new to Detroit. And uh, I, although this work, we say DEI, I, I don't love that, that name for this sector to begin with, diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, so I actually worked in education for a number of years. I still do research in social emotional character development. And so my career started in education, but I got involved in nuclear abolition. And that was from my time living in Japan. And uh, I was working on education initiatives there, but I found and was introduced to a survivor of the Hiroshima bombing. and hearing his life story and hearing the true impact of nuclear weapons and understanding also the colonial and imperialistic implications of how nuclear weapons were even created. Um, there are such huge racial undertones in, in that space. So I got very, very deeply involved in the nuclear abolition space. Uh, my team and I, we won the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize for our work on an international treaty that has entered into force making nuclear weapons illegal. We've divested $3.4 trillion already in less than one year. And the reason I say all of this is the work that I've always been doing, I've focused on race, but I was never able to talk about it openly. It was something we kind of had to stick in there because it wasn't a conversation people were uh, ready to have, in, in all honesty. So as my campaign, um, the treaty entered into force, we made nuclear weapons illegal, 2020 happened, and I'm thinking about what is my next move. Um, I do have my own nonprofit, but we do peace education and it's very difficult to get funding. And I was seeing in the world that it may be finally open and ready to have conversations specifically about racism mm. and decolonization. Mm. And that's what I've been most interested in in my career, but I've not been able to say those words. Mm. Um, even saying that we do anti-racism work at New Detroit is very new for the organization. Um, just using that word is divisive. Just the word racism, people don't want to hear it. So 
what brought me to this work was the feeling that I could finally bring out this part of myself and my work that has been so critical and important, but I was never able to talk about. And New Detroit for me represents the space that I'm able to do that. And um, I came here from, from New York. Uh, I'm from New Jersey, but I was living in Manhattan. Um, and we, I, I moved here to be able to do this work. And, and I just definitely uh, thank you for giving us a macro down to the micro of how you ended up in this space and your passion for this. Um, and it's been on your heart. And, and essentially, you see it as education, which it is. So when we speak about education, tools, you're given tools in education. What are the tools that you hope? And as you say, it's not in a day. But what are some tools that you see people walking away with, especially when we think of the breakout sessions? Absolutely. And even the, I guess, collective sessions as well. What are some of those tools? So the things that we hope folks walk away with, uh, one is a curiosity to hmm. do more. So again, as we were saying, this isn't something that you're just going to, you can't just check a box or read one book. So we hope that we've sparked curiosity so that you can dig deeper into all of these different sectors because they are all interconnected and they all feed on or off of one another, all of our systems. So also bringing in the understanding of intersectionality. And that's what we hope folks are walking away with, a deeper understanding of maybe the space where they specifically occupy, but then also the connections to all of the other issues and how we can work together to actually solve them. Um, I truly believe we are not able to solve any of our social issues in a vacuum. We have to look at them all collectively. That's climate change, that all of it coming back to, for me, is colonization. And when we think about what decolonization is, decolonizing our systems, decolonizing our spaces, most importantly, decolonizing our minds. Thank you so much.